Okay, Flip, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for this interview. And in fact, when we define galaxies, we define by combining proteins with different carbohydrate specificities. Each member of the Gallican family has a different uh, phenotype and has a different immunoregulatory effect depending on the tissue and depending on, on the uh, specificity of these particular Gallicans because the carbohydrate specificities can be different. So our group has demonstrated that particularly Gallican 1 um, can have immunoregulatory activity by specifically eliminating TH1 and TH17 differentiated cells uh, and also CD8 positive cells. This is very important because it helps uh, tumors to evade the immune response and if we can selectively target TH1 and TH17 cells, which are the main cells in autoimmune diseases, which can also selectively eliminate those cells that cause autoimmune diseases, inflammatory autoimmune and on the other hand, uh, Gallican 1 also converts to neurogenic dendritic cells, and so it binds to C43 on dendritic cells and induces dendritic cells that produce very high amounts of IL27 and IL10. So it converts immunogenic into tolerogenic dendritic cells. So it has a main pro resolving and anti inflammatory role. On first, it induces mice to activate the T cells and kill TH1 and T17. Second, it converts immunogenic into tolerogenic dendritic cells. And also, it can induce a shift from M1 polarized macrophages to M2 polarized macrophages and also links uh, immunosuppression and antigenesis. So, there are different, in different cells, it exerts different groups. And the most important thing is that the overall effect is immunosuppression and an anti inflammatory effect. I will refer to the Lectin 1, which is the, the, the galactin that uh, we may study. But what we found is that uh, during uh, the peak of any inflammatory response, so, so during physiologic conditions, galactin 1 is at very low levels. Um, it's, it's mainly in its monomeric form, it does not demerize. So it's very difficult that it will cross link like conjugates and induce these particular effects. But during the peak of inflammation, different inflammatory responses, also calcium 1 peaks. It peaks, it's, it's, uh, it's, it gets dimerized, so we have the dimer instead of the monomer, it can cross link glycoconjugates, and it induces apoptosis of T cells, tolerogenic dendritic cells, and all the immunoregulatory effects that I told about. So I think that it, it, it restores homeostasis. So during inflammation, there is an increased levels of calcium 1, calcium 1 is immunosuppressive and inflammatory and it helps restores, restoring homeostasis uh, when homeostasis is disturbed. Well, uh, we, we discovered in tumors that in 2004 we published a paper showing that melanoma cells, when, when they become more aggressive and metastatic, they, they increase the amounts of galactin 1, so galactin 1 produced by tumor cells uh, helps the tumor to evade the immune response. Uh, we demonstrated this in a melanoma model, and also we found the different types of models like lung cancer, Hodgkin lymphoma, ovarian carcinoma. In the case of ovarian carcinoma, we found that the microbiota, uh, the commensal microbiota, regulates calcium one expression due to PLR5 uh, mediated mechanisms. And also, we found that in the case of pancreatic cancer, uh, gallic 1 is mainly expressed by the stroma, by pancreatic stem cells, and contribute to tumor progression by regulating also antigenesis, by regulating immunosuppression. Uh, we found that gallic 1 is regulated by hypoxia, so very low levels of oxygen, very low levels of oxygen increase gallic 1 expression through mechanisms that are dependent on nf kappa B. Gallic 1 binds to BGF receptor 2, which is the main receptor shared by muscular endothelial factor, by BGF and preserves endogenesis even in anti-BGF refractory tumors. So, Galactin 1 is in the, in, within the tumor itself is immunosuppressive and is also pro-angiogenic. In the case of autoimmune diseases, Galactin 1 is more anti-inflammatory, immunosuppressive, and in the case of uh, infections, it helps many pathogens to infect. 
and we have just found this in uh, Chlamydia trachomatis. Uh, we found this in Gersinia enterocolitica, which is an enteropathogenic bacteria, and also in Dicus and some of those. Well, in fact, uh, it may affect normal activity, but uh, in the case of tumors, the microenvironment is completely different. So, it, uh, the, the microenvironment uh, is consistent with an aggressive phenotype, with an aggressive inflammatory microenvironment, and there are many different cells around the tumor microenvironment that Gallicin 1 can kill selectively or can promote tolerogenic cells or M1 to M2 macrophages. So if we block gallicin 1 expression using an anti gallicin 1 antibody, we can restore all this inflammatory response. So these T cells will not die because they will not die in the, rest of the absence of gallicin 1. There will not be blood vessels and the breathing cells will become more immunogenic. So the microenvironment will be more favorable to, to, to try to kill it all. Okay, yes, yes, we, we, we are very proud that our research has came from Argentina and has been developed from the very beginning uh, with an unexpected discovery in Argentina and, and we were able to develop all this project in Argentina and also we were able to develop our technology as well, to patent our technology. I think Latin American countries need the support, first of all, of the government because the governments need to support basic science. The basic science is very important for transfer technologies. Sometimes the governments have a mess and they always think about applied science and not about basic science. I think that basic science needs to be taken care of and governments have to take care of this part, the creativity, of, and need to support young people. Uh, so these young people will not travel abroad, they will travel abroad just for the, for the training, but they will come back to their countries uh, because they will help the new generations to establish science. I think that the only thing, the, the only way to try to develop the economics of our country in Latin America is to try to support science and education. Without science and education, it would be impossible to grow uh, as a developing country.